Good afternoon, good afternoon, good folks. Thank you all for tuning in. This is the Real Life Real Estate Investing Show, where we talk about real life real estate solutions. Where we talk about real life real life real life real estate situations. That's where right. we bring you real life real estate solutions. I'm your host, Glenn Glasper, affectionately known as Mr. Dial Out of a Dime. And I have with me the awesome and talented Miss <laughs> Danielle Jasmine that's gonna be sharing with us some of the some of the things that We've been trying to figure out for the longest. This is a mystery for all of us yes, investors. Yes. Contractors. <laughs> Talking about contractors. <laughs> so, um, at the, at, since it's early in the show, I'm going to talk about some people. I won't say their names, but I've been trying to get contractors to come on for a while. Yeah, yeah. And um, But thank you for taking the time. Of course, of course. Coming on and just sharing with us some of your knowledge and uh, your experience with working with investors. So we're going to get into all of that. Yeah. Um, but I do want to take an opportunity, give you, give you an opportunity to just introduce to the folks yeah. who you are, what you do, um, talk about your infamous, your famous <laughs> husband, a <laughs> uh, really good friend. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll just talk about, you know, then we'll get into, yeah. you know, what, what you do. Okay, great. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Um, so, yeah, I'm Danielle Jasmine. I, I don't do these interviews often, um, so this is a, a new I'm experience. <laughs> um, I couldn't say no. I'll give that to you. Um, this is definitely a new experience for me, but I'm trying to put myself out there more. Um, you know, I feel like I have a lot to share regarding, you know, the unique perspective of being a contractor and also an investor. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Uh, but to give you a little bit of background, yes, my, my famous, infamous, whatever you want to call it, husband. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mohar Bhagat, um, you know, he started M2 Rest 10 years ago uh, mm. with his sister. That's what the M2 stands for. Um, and then he, he ran the business for several years remotely. Uh, and then after we got married in 2013, we decided to take the plunge and I left my full time position. I was working uh, in nonprofit uh, field for many years. Um, I left it and I joined the business. We wow, had no wow. idea what I was going to be doing in this <laughs> business. Uh, we felt it out completely, and I'm not going to lie. First couple of years were rough, you know. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. family and business is tricky. Husband and wife. Oh and wow! Yes, is yes. <laughs> um, and uh, but we were determined. We were determined to make it through. And and I pretty much found my niche. What I fell in love with mm -hmm. was the mm -hmm. construction, was the design um, in real estate, and it was something that he'd always had a passion for, but very high level. Right. He Love right, the right. before and after, um, but he managed them remotely, and so the details, the on site, the working with individual contractors wasn't something that um, he had a lot of juice for. And I found that it was something that I fell in love with you know, the transformation, taking these homes wow. from what they are dilapidated, uninhabitable you know just crazy homes into beautiful homes such as what you're seeing you know today Absolutely. where we are Absolutely. and so I fell in love with it and I proceeded to have a few years where I directly you know managed our projects um, and hired all of our contractors um, worked hand in hand with Mohar in our real estate investment business and then I came to the conclusion a couple years ago that I wanted to become a contractor myself wow. um, and wow. I wanted to take on that role and and not hire a contractor to then hire contractors to right, build homes right, for right. us. Um, so I did that and officially became a licensed contractor. Um, I guess it's been a few months ago now wow. um, and have been working wow. as one with consultation, you know, gen general contractors for a while now. And so here I am, an investor slash contractor wow. um, building homes. <laughs> and it's always investor first. Yes. Um, I'm yes, always clear yes. about that because we have a lot of different investments. Um, but I love construction and I love building homes. So. Yes. That is amazing. That is amazing. You know, that's what I say. You know, even when doing what I do, I do several other things, but I always mm -hmm. say I'm an investor first. <laughs> yes. And we didn't always used to say that. We right, used to call right. ourselves a rehabber. Absolutely. Um, rehabber Absolutely. and then builder. And then we really just a couple of years ago started looking at it holistically and, you know, beefed up our wholesaling. And that's a huge aspect of our business right now. And so that's when we were like, this is about investment, right, you know, and, right. and investing in other kind of fields and, you know, different related businesses as well. So... Wow, yeah, yeah. Wow. You, you said wholesaling. We're going to talk about that yes, too. <laughs> I know, I know, that's the 
<laughs> so, so now you said you you became a licensed contractor mm-hmm. just a little, little while ago. Yeah. What, was there some desire? I mean, I know you said you wanted to be in the field and mm-hmm. helping with the design and all that. Yeah. So, was there an idea that you'd be the one that mm-hmm. would get the contractor's license? Was that? Yeah, planned? it's funny because it's usually reversed, right? Right. Yeah. Um, whenever you see like a husband and wife team, um, it's usually the husband who's the contractor and the wife who's right, the real estate right, agent. Right. Whereas Mohar is the real estate agent and I'm the contractor. Oh it wow. Just okay. Happens to be that that's what our skill sets um, align to. Okay, um, okay. I love construction. I love design. Um, I'm a project manager. You know, that's mm-hmm. where my experience mm-hmm. is. Um, I used to manage a lot in nonprofit worlds and, and different programs and whatnot. But that skill set very easily transitioned into uh, this field because mm-hmm. it's about bringing a whole bunch of pieces together. You yes. know, like a yes. lot of people, different agendas, different roles, bringing them together for a common goal. Absolutely. Um, so all that stuff really applied. And Mohar is an investor. He is juiced by the buy and the sale, bringing the deal together. So it made sense for him to be an agent um, and it made sense for me to be a contractor. So it was really wow, clear, yeah. Wow. Perfect, and, you know, and, and you don't find it often that you have those situations that mesh well together, you yeah. know, and they work and, you know, they're, they're seamless and it seems mm-hmm. like what you guys are doing is, I mean, of course, it's phenomenal. Thank you, <laughs> thank you so much, yeah. So, so now, from a, from a contractor perspective, yes. now, of course, that's what we're gonna be talking about. Yeah. Um, do you have challenges now of course you're a project manager and things like Mm -hmm. that so you've worked with other investors yes okay so tell us about some challenges Mm -hmm. that you may have had working with investors Mm -hmm. as a contractor yeah well let me be clear let me clarify i am not a contractor for hire for other investors so that's not something that's not you got a lot lot going on already yeah we got a whole lot going on um and and it's not for lack of you know desire there's been a lot of you know investors who've been interested in um, partnering with us in that capacity Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. and it's something that we're interested in pursuing in the future but we want to get to a place where we are like a mcdonald's of building Mm -hmm. before Mm -hmm. we can outsource and provide that service to others. Got it, that's got it. that's my goal. I want mm-hmm. it to be so incredibly streamlined and so systematic that I can offer this as a service for other investors to help right. them. Um, but right now we're not there yet. You know, that's okay. where I'm growing. That's where I'm getting to. Um, so, but we have partnered with other investors. We've mm-hmm. partnered with um, other contractors. We've partnered with other investors. Investors who are contractors who build for themselves and then build um, in partnerships. Mm-hmm. Um, this mm-hmm. particular home that we're sitting in right now was a partnership with investors who happen to also be contractors. Oh, wow. Um, wow. So we've, we believe in partnerships. We believe in people coming together, bringing different skill sets, mm-hmm. bringing different um, you know, when you're looking at a partnership, you're looking at different pieces, right? You right. have the acquisition, you have the financing, you have the build, you have the design. So we're always like assessing, okay, what are we willing in this particular project to, to offer? What does somebody else have and what are they willing to offer to make right. the partnership work? Mm-hmm. So this particular house came together because we had that partnership with somebody else. So that's the ways in which we've worked with other investors got and it, got contractors. It. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. And and so I guess I imagine since you're pretty much the the boss, Thank you. <laughs> so you don't have many challenges. Well, well, as far as challenges, yeah, that's right. Let me answer your question. Um, so challenges, of course, we have challenges. You know, mm-hmm. like I spent the reason I became a contractor is because I spent years having challenges with contractors. Mm-hmm. So it's not that like I've figured out this secret magic way to work with contractors or what contractors so to you're hire. Not the, the contract. Or whisper the whisperer, <laughs> guru, no, definitely not. No, it's it's about coming together, and mm-hmm. I think the the approach that we had, which we felt that we didn't see a lot with other investors, was to meet people where they're at, right. um, to to basically see other perspectives and come together for the common good. You know, mm-hmm. um, it's something that I think my skill set, you know, added a lot of value to because right. I was used to doing that because it's. A, You know, at the end of the day, we saw a lot of adversarial relationships um, between contractors and investors, Mm -hmm. and we didn't we didn't believe it. Even though we had issues with contractors, we've had them all. We've had lean issues. We've had poor construction issues. We've had lots of hiccups that we've had to deal with. We did not take on the mindset that we so often see investors have, which is contractors are, you know, they, there's a saying, you can't have um, all three. 
quality, price, and time. And time. Right? Yes, That's what yes. everybody says. <laughs> Every investor says that, right? You got to choose. You got to yeah. be selective about. We didn't believe it. We right. don't believe right. it to mm -hmm. this day, right? Because if you believe it, then it is. So if I Absolutely. believe there's not a contractor out there who can meet all three three things, then guess what? There's not there's a contractor not out there right. that can meet all. Yeah. So, um, so we were very clear about d despite hiccups that we had, you know, and they were big hiccups to the tunes of tens of thousands of dollars. It's mm. not small things. We've had nightmare situations just as other investors have had, but it was about, okay, how do we learn from this? How do we grow right, from this? Right, right. Okay, so mm -hmm. this happened, so let me change my system. Let me figure out a way so that I can ensure that this never happens again. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, we've, we pride on sel ourselves on never being one and done. Um, I never, you know, had a contractor or something come up with a contractor where it was like, that's it, we're done. Um, we can't make this work or, mm -hmm. you know, it, mm -hmm. there've been a couple of times where we've had to fire contractors, don't get me wrong with that. But in terms of just the ability to, to come together and see, okay, what's your perspective? What's our perspective? How can we make this happen? Because mm -hmm. this is our goal. Mm -hmm. we, we both want to make money, right? Definitely. And Definitely. the only way we both make money is finishing a beautiful quality built home, right? right? So how can we make that happen? So at the end of the day, yes, we've had our, our hiccups, we've had our challenges, but it was really about us figuring out ways to work with contractors in partnership capacities mm -hmm. um, and meeting mm -hmm. them where they're at um, to get the job done versus this adversarial, like, who's going to eat? You right, know, who's right, going right, to get right, the yeah. profit, right? <laughs> like, because um, that's what you see so often. Yeah, yeah. So. You know, Mohar said something real, real um Real great when he talked when he spoke at Wholesalers Russ mm -hmm. when he talked about saying to the contractor that I want to see you eat yes. I know you have your family to feed this that or the other Absolutely. so how can we make it work you Absolutely know? put I, that line item in your bid we want to see this is your contractor overhead Absolutely we want to know you get paid you don't have to sneak it in here or there or whatever yes, be yes, clear yes. especially when you're working with more educated investors right, like we're right. going to know what certain standardized pricing is so we rather it be that way so it's on the up and up and mm -hmm. it's clear and there's never this oh we're not making money type of situation got we're it, both making it. money let's be clear so, so in, in, a, in a situation with uh, dealing with a contractor is it you know we you know you have people that say um, you know for investors and new investors a lot of times they learn from different people and they say well you should get three bids mm -hmm. from three different contractors yeah um, how, what is your feeling about that? Mm -hmm. I mean, as far as the contractor's time and you know yeah. energy and putting yeah, into yeah. all of that. Well, that's a perfect point, right? Because that's one of the things that I'm always talking to investors about. It's like really seeing contractors from their perspective, mm -hmm. and their mm -hmm. time is valuable, incredibly Absolutely. valuable. Um, and so, three bids, I highly recommend it. Um, but what I'm always telling people is that it's a, it's a funnel, you know, and mm -hmm. people get very mm -hmm. frustrated because they're like, oh, we've met you know, this many contractors. So people refer to funnels with wholesaling a whole lot, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And they're like, yes. okay, this many leads, this much marketing produces this many leads, get you this many, you know. So so our approach has been, okay, how, where are we gonna get the most from? And Got assessing it. where we get the most resources for contractors. Mm -hmm. So um, you could be on Angie's List and Kudzu and you know, all these other um, places, Build Zoom, all these other sites, and mm -hmm. uh, assess or collect contractors' numbers, a million of them, and cold call and cold call and cold call. Mm -hmm. We have mm -hmm. not found that to be the most um, you know, beneficial or a way to, to pretty much find contractors. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. the companies that are on those sites are companies that are so massive and so big right, that they right. have somebody manning mm -hmm. those sites who's putting marketing out there, collecting, you know, and their free bids, free all this type of advertising. Mm -hmm. And as investors, those are not the companies you want to be working right. with. Um, those are built for homeowners and, you know, the homeowner pricing and whatnot. So our our funnel has really come from different sources. So you always hear Home Depot Lowe's, mm -hmm. you hear mm -hmm. um, different stuff, job sites is huge huge for us right, like right. going to job sites you see a house being framed up around the corner from where you're buying a house go stop by talk to the framer that's how you get connected hey who's your mm -hmm. boss who you're working mm -hmm. for you like working for him 
check out his job site. It's a clear job site. Mm -hmm. Get his phone number. Give him a call. Those direct personal kind of Absolutely. references and resources. So yeah, it's all about getting as many leads as you can and then bringing it down. Mm -hmm. The very first project I ever did, I met 25 contractors out wow. um, on a job site. Wow. And wow. I think maybe a third of them didn't even show up. I sat in my car waiting forever, frustrated, just like everyone wow. else is, that wow. I couldn't get. <laughs> so we had to change, you know, change our kind of um, approach to how we connect with contractors. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. What was your question? Did I answer it? <laughs> <laughs> you came close. Okay. <laughs> so no, I, I was asking about the, the, the three bid um, yeah. process that so, people go through. Yeah, three bids. Mm -hmm. I, I think you can assess a lot by walking a, a property with somebody before mm -hmm. you need to narrow them down on get me pricing, get me pricing. Um, so mm -hmm. my approach in um, getting bids with contractors was that I was going to be proactive. This is this is a really key point too. Um, mm -hmm. Us as investors, um, we have put, well, you know, I've been in this community for some time now and so this is what I've uh, witnessed. We've put a lot of um, onus um, and initiative on contractors for our investments, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. the quality of the construction absolutely should be on the contractor. But there are other things in terms of time, in terms of sourcing materials, um, in terms of design. Like if you have your contractor designing your houses, <laughs> that's not a good look, you right, know? Like right. you can't complain <laughs> then when your house isn't selling if it isn't designed beautifully. Absolutely, you absolutely. know, so there are lots of things that we put on contractors um, and not being proactive in terms of our approach, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So I was proactive. So I, I had to make up for what I didn't know. I didn't know construction. Mm -hmm, so we mm -hmm. got inspector um, inspectors, home inspectors to come in, give us inspection reports, mm -hmm. detailed inspection reports, and then I created these insanely detailed scopes of work, like <laughs> unnecessarily <laughs> detailed, to, like six page scopes of work that a lot wow. of contractors like were like they're afraid of that. <laughs> their eyes rolled back in their head and they were scared. So they've scaled back since okay. then. I've, I've built it back. But the point so you're down was from six to four. I'm like two pages, okay. two maybe three sometimes now. But the the point is that I wanted to give them something. The other thing is I would take pictures. So I got all the pictures of my home. Mm. I would follow up with an email, send them um, a Google, you know. Uh, doc link or something mm -hmm, to all mm -hmm. of the pictures um, and then I would send them the scope of work so they could very easily assess what are they looking for me to price out what is this you know the scope of this project as a whole mm -hmm. what are some of the major design decisions that are going to majorly impact this bid got because it, there's you know people talk about price per square foot to build things and any contractor who stands there and is like I can build this for this price per square foot without knowing all the specs what you want to put in the house. Mm -hmm, if you're going to mm -hmm. have crown molding, if you're going to have, you know, cheap tile, expensive tile, like what right, you want marble, right, right. You what do you want on your countertops without mm -hmm. knowing all that stuff is not a contractor that I can take their word, you know, Absolutely. because Absolutely. how do they, you don't know what I want to build. Mm -hmm. So as an investor, I was proactive creating a scope of work that was detailed and all of the information that I knew, the vision, because I'm the only person who has the vision as a mm -hmm. project manager. Mm -hmm. This is what the house is now. This is where I want it to be. And so I had to convey that to them so I could empower them to be able to get information to me. So I wow. spoon fed it, you know, mm -hmm. I made it as easy as possible for them so they could quickly bid something out. Because most of the time they have programs or something, they could plug it in, I put square footages in there, you know, whatever you can do to make it simplified and easy for them, to save them time mm -hmm. and to empower them to get you what you need in order for you to make a decision for your, your investment, because wow. it is your investment. That's that, that is amazing. Yeah. So that that's actually another question I was going to ask. Um, so as a contractor, mm -hmm. and you know, this is going to probably be a you know interesting question that somebody else may be wanting to know the answer to. Mm -hmm. What is it that a contractor should expect from an investor? Mm -hmm. Should an investor have that knowledge, mm -hmm. or should they be prepared in that way mm -hmm. when they call a contractor to yeah. to talk about doing the job? Well, that's what's tricky, right? Because mm -hmm. you have investors that like have all these level different levels of knowledge base and mm -hmm. experience, mm -hmm. and especially in today's market, right? right? It's an incredibly booming market. You have so many new investors, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and they aren't knowledgeable um, about construction or about what it's going to take to build this or do that. So yes, we yes. put a lot of responsibility on contractors to not only build the homes, but educate the investor along wow. the way, yes. which 
which is a lot of weight to yes. carry. You know, yes. it's not their investment and it's not their, you know, th don't get me wrong. There are some build firms that 100% um, that's their model, you know, mm -hmm. but they're more geared towards homeowners, you know, right, educating right, them, right. providing options, all this stuff. But the average contractor that's going to want to work with an investor and create a partnership um, shouldn't have to carry the burden of, you know, educating the investor throughout the entire process. Mm -hmm. So um, so everyone's got to start somewhere. Right. Yes. And it's actually something yes. that I've seen as like a gap something that's really necessary for investors wow. and mm -hmm. so you know on the sidelines it, when i get free time which isn't very often <laughs> i'm starting to really brainstorm and figure out ways that i can provide resources for investors mm. um, okay. to help them along in this process because you only need a little bit of information in order to ask the right questions Got and in it, order bro. to make decisions i don't need to know how a complete and total hvac system works in order to make a decision whether or not i want to go electric or gas you know, got there's it, some it. simple bullet points that I can make a decision based off of the home, based off of the price point, all these things that as an investor, I can know what I want and then provide that information and make it easier for my contractor. Um, so to answer your question, um, yes, they should know some stuff. Investors should do their homework, right. you know, like Google. <laughs> Google is like my best friend, Mohar's always saying that also. Like anything I didn't know, I Googled. Yes. Anytime a contractor said, hey, do you want this or do you want that in the home? I was, and I didn't know what this or that or the different options. <laughs> I would hear his suggestions, then I would go home yeah, and go I would Google. Google it. And then guess what I would do? I would download whatever it was and I would save it so I knew it on the next project and the next Absolutely. project. You know, Absolutely. because I didn't want to just take my contractor's word for it because there are contractors who swear by gas furnaces in every house. And mm. there are others that are like, oh, no, electric's fine. So you really have to um, basically come up, educate yourself just enough so that you can come up with your own opinions mm -hmm. so that you mm -hmm. can direct your project, your investment. And you have an idea how much a real rehab project would cost. Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Have a sense of what you want to build it at, you mm. know, like what go in with a budget, you know, that's mm -hmm. because here's the thing, like investors sit around in, in, in meetups and stuff and they're talking about contractor woes and woes. Mm -hmm. Guess what contractors are doing? <laughs> you know? <laughs> they're sitting around talking, talking about, about this investors. investor that, that my project stopped, money's not flowing. Or we good? Oh, All right, perfect. It looks, ah, looks really go. good too. <laughs> so we had to uh, get a better connection. Yeah. Uh, we won't say what phone service we had to use to get the better connection. <laughs> One of those other phone services. <laughs> but anyway, we're back. Yes. Um, and, and, you know, we were having such a good time. Yeah, you know, we, we, I think she was trying to tell us that the signal was gone for I a know. while. I know. We were like, what? Like, no, we just going to keep on going. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go back into some of what we were talking yes. about just to make sure you guys heard, yeah, heard all the good information. Know where we were. Right. Um, so for those of you that will chime back in, come on back in. Come on yeah, back in. Yeah, come on back. Um, let us know you're back. Yeah. And, uh, and and right where we are, you know, if you guys have questions, go ahead and start posting your questions. We will look at Please posting, do. look at some of uh, answering some of those questions. Yeah. So we were talking about um, all the fun that yes. it is to be an investor working with contractors. Yes, yes. Um, and one of the things I think we were we were discussing mm -hmm. was um, the bidding process. Yeah, yeah. You know, how, how some investors go through and try to get three bids on their projects mm -hmm. and things like that. And you were saying how the education level of some investors mm -hmm. should be to at least to a degree where they yeah. can understand what they're asking the yeah. contractor to bid on. Especially so you're comparing apples to apples. Yes. A lot yes, of times yes, you'll yes. have different bids and if you're not giving them enough information to bid a project on, then of course somebody's coming in thousands cheaper because yes. they didn't include countertops or cabinets because right, right, we right. thought you were going to get that, you know, right. one of those situations. <laughs> so, I've had that happen before yeah. too. I've had I've had a, you know a price where it was like fifteen or twenty thousand dollars off, yeah. and I'm like, well, what happened over here? Why was your price? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, well, I didn't think you wanted trimming. One yeah. guy told me he said I didn't think you wanted trimming in yeah. the like, trimming. That's, <laughs> how can we do a house without trimming? Yeah, that's the thing of it. If you don't know, if you don't specify, right, and you right, can right. Come right. up with that stuff pretty easily, like in your scope mm -hmm, of work. Mm -hmm. You can say simple trim. You know, like one by four is you know casing. One by six, you know, absolutely, um, absolutely. for my baseboards. Or you could say crown in rooms that you want crown, like just really specify. And what it does, it 
there, it means there's a lot more work initially for an investor mm -hmm. because you have mm -hmm. to come up with the vision, come up with the specs, come up with exactly what you want in your home, mm -hmm. do the research to do that. Look at your comps. Do they have crown? Do they not have crown? Are you building modern? Are you building you know, more of a transitional home? Wow. All these kinds of things. Know what you want in order to get a price for absolutely, it, basically. Absolutely. Is what it comes down I, to. I hope you all are getting this. I hope you all are getting this because you're saying some very good stuff about knowing you're comparing apples to apples. Yeah. And I find that a lot of times, like, I mean, I, I consult with people on doing uh, rehabs and things yeah. like that. And a lot of times what they don't understand is that if you have a house with crown molding and then there's one without crown and yeah. then, you know, the, the, you know, the casings and things like that mm -hmm. are different and the yeah. doors are different. Mm -hmm. You have six panel doors over the, you know, different yeah. type of doors. And people don't look at that detail of stuff. Yes. You know, even down to the tile, the type mm -hmm. of wood you have on the floor. Yeah. People don't look at the details of those mm -hmm. things and not realize that in many cases that we've had appraisers come in and speak to our group mm -hmm. to tell us that those are the things that they appraise on. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. so that, I mean, it's amazing. Like people don't pay attention to those mm -hmm. details and yeah. they say, well, this house will sell for the same amount that this house sold for. Yeah even though it doesn't have the same yeah. thing. And knowing what details are going to get you a higher price, right? right. So it's Absolutely. like assessing your comps and then assessing the value. It's like, it's a ratio, you know? Like how yes. much more money am I going to spend on this and how much more value am I going to have on Absolutely. the end? Absolutely. Like what's the Absolutely. perceived value of yes. it? You know, like yes. hardwoods is a perfect example. Mm -hmm. Like whether you decide to do carpet or hardwoods, you know, in certain areas of your home mm -hmm. is largely based off of the comps, is based off of how much more money it's going to cost in order to do that and what's the extra perceived value of the home right, based right, off right. of it. And then what's key too is like actually, you know, advertising that. You know, we pride ourselves on not only making decisions that are going to produce a better quality, you know, built construction, but also quality design, mm. but then also advertising what we did do. This is, yes. So having home feature, um, you know, lists. We mm -hmm. have one in this house right now, you know, that tells all the features of this home. Right. Like, I want people to know that these are really expensive floors that we put in this home throughout the entire home. Yes. I want them yes. to know it's an updated lighting and plumbing modern package. I'll throw e even throw in a couple of brand names in there, you right. know, that <laughs> Mohars always say, nobody knows what this is. Nobody right. knows what that is. Like, people don't know what kind of stone this is or they don't know this or that and I'm like okay not everybody does a mm. lot of homeowners don't even when they don't know what it is it sounds it fancy. sounds like it okay <laughs> I want people buying my home to think my home is a fancy home right Seriously. right exactly so even you know and they're crazy names too you know like this is a koa lighting fixture or whatever it's like I want people to know that we spent more money on the home so that they in turn want to spend more money on so the home. In your staging you put in there that it's cottonelle yeah. tissue as, a, as opposed to angel <laughs> soft. <laughs> Use our toilet paper. Right. That's right. <laughs> get a bottle of water. No, right. We don't take it that far. But you know you get the point. Um, yes. it's, it's really and, it, and that's again being proactive as an investor. Absolutely. It, it's your responsibility Absolutely. to do that. So say you have an agent um, representing you which most, most investors do right mm -hmm. unless they're mm -hmm agent themselves so it's about getting again the same concept all that information to your agent yes. so where does where do our agents get the list from me right Absolutely. they tweak them they make them right. sound flowery and beautiful and nice right. but I send them to them and then they use all that information to sell the home wow. so um, wow. so yeah wow. But back to your point about, you know, initially making those decisions and stuff, that's where all of the, the homework happens, you know, mm -hmm. like the, you know, before the test, that's when you're studying. Yes. Like before yes. you start yes. demo on a house, you know what the v end vision is going to be. Definitely. And Definitely. there's enough surprises. There are enough surprises, wow. as wow. we all know, <laughs> throughout the rehab project or a, a new construction project, not as many, but still, mm -hmm. um, for you to not have to not know things that you could have decided well in advance. Yes. So that's what's really key, too. It's just spend the time to come up with the vision and the specs of your home um, so that everyone's empowered, you know, to move along. That, is, that is great. That's <laughs> why, you know, now rehabbing houses before, I would mm -hmm. never get an architectural design. I would, uh -huh. It's like, I don't need that. I know what I'm yeah. going to do. And then in the middle of it, I changed my mind. I said, well, I want to do this. And I realizing it's going to cost me more money to change yeah. my mind. Yeah, absolutely. Change your mind costs more right. money. It's so funny because it's like you watch all the um, shows on TV yes, and stuff, right? Yes, and so yes. people are like, oh, this is what it is to be an investor. But it drives us crazy because we're watching them and we're like, oh, my goodness. 
they decided to change the windows after the siding was up, after the drywall and the trim was up. (laughs) You can't do that. That's like not possible without tearing up your house. Yes, 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 yes. So it's hysterical (laughs) that the order of operations or they come in after you're completely framed and roughed in, all your plumbing's in, and they're like, no, we want to decide the layout of this bathroom. And you can see things stubbed out. So it's, you know, a lot of it is just for TV. But that, it kind of drives us crazy. But some investors do do that. They come in after the fact and they're like hey can we do this or can we do that it costs if when your mind is not made up it costs you twice as much yes 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 so at first it costs you to be a rookie doing this on your own (laughs) and uh, that's why there's real life real estate investing because it's not as seen on tv this is real life this is real life people it will cost you twice as much (laughs) absolutely absolutely so you made you made a point so i would ask new construct or redevelopment or new development so that's been interesting for us. Mm-hmm. We've had, you know, a journey with that. Um, people are always asking, like, why do y'all do rehab, rehab so much yeah. now, right? Because we've been doing rehabs. This is a new construction. This is a partnership we did. But these are few and far between um, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. as far as our project. Most of them have been rehabs recently. Um, it's about a lot of factors. Um, timing is the number one. Um, mm-hmm. We know where mm-hmm. the market's at. Mohart just spoke last night um, to uh, Atlanta Masters of REI, mm-hmm. and he talked all about the state of the market. Um, and it, so it, he, his finger is on the pulse of that. You know, mm-hmm. He is a consumer of information, and he downloads all of it, and then he's informing where to take our business. You know, it, um, And it. so uh, essentially we decided some time ago that we didn't want to get in a whole lot of projects that were super long-term. We've been mm-hmm. there. We've had projects right. that lasted two, even a couple that lasted three years long. Right, so we right. understand um, the amount of investment it takes, um, the risk associated with that investment, mm-hmm. the amount of buyer pool at a more expensive yeah, home. You know, yeah. you we got, sold a you home. You guys have people that are buying from California. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy how, you know, when how it shrinks as right, it goes exactly. up. You know, and especially more and more and more as the market in, is changing. Mm-hmm. So with all of that information, we've decided, especially after having so many positive experiences, experiences where I can come in, take an existing footprint of a home, Mm -hmm. rehab it, Nine times out of ten, I'm gutting it because that's what I like to do. Mm-hmm, you know, we mm-hmm. we are more expensive builders because of the quality. We don't Got come it. in, we don't cover things up. We actually change out all the major systems, so um, that comes at a cost, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but what it also means we can do is step up the design, so it's higher in design, in same footprints. And guess what we found? A lot of people are looking to even spend a little bit more money price per square foot to be in these neighborhoods not mm-hmm. everyone wants to live in a right. McMansion you right. know there are right. people who want to live in a smaller bungalow that has hot design absolutely. and know that absolutely. it's built quality you yeah. know so it's really appealing to to those buyers that's been our strategy lately um, for a lot of different reasons but the turnarounds are quick we had our quickest rehab not that long ago that was 105 days wow. and it wow. was a complete complete overhaul um, so and that's you know from purchase to sale you know wow. so that's everything wow. so wow. so that was um, that was exciting for us yeah that is that is great mm-hmm. and, you know and, and I asked that question because I get that a lot of times well, why don't you build new I'm like yeah I ain't got time for that <laughs> yeah it's, it's a process and and it's you it costs money to learn yes, right? yes so yes, what are you doing yes, you're yes. working through plans yes. and you don't know what you need and what this needs that's when you really your team expands because then you talk yes. about your architect your um, your um, surveyor your permit expediter you're mm-hmm. talking about a lot of people right. to bring that home you know an arborist if you got trees you got to take down so it and if there weren't homes there before then it's a lot of development you got to bring utilities in all of that Mm. takes a lot of time Mm. we've done all of it we know you know so it's it's an extensive process that unless unless it is there's such a spread and it's so worth it to make Mm -hmm. that investment um, then it's something you really have to second guess um, yourself about now with that said there are investors and contractors out there that that's their sweet spot you right, know, like right. Frank, new construction yes, all the way. Yes, and he's building long. beautiful <laughs> moderns all over the city and they're gorgeous, right? right. So mm-hmm. it, it's all about what works for you. Everyone has a different model. You right, know, lots right. of other investors don't gut homes. They'll just buy homes that need more of a cosmetic rehab. Mm-hmm. So um, so it's all about the model that works for you. And we just found that this model works for us. We like the quick turnarounds. You know, I like mm. I like to walk a house and then three months later walk it. To and, walk it and it's done. Yeah, yeah like it just feels good. You know, like it yeah. turn around. 
So, so you, and you said some really good stuff again. You got some really good stuff. We got to do this again. <laughs> um, because, I mean, it, it's a, you're, you're making great points that I think a lot of investors miss, mm. especially new investors. Yeah. And, and you're, you're leading up to some points when I'm going to talk about wholesalers. Uh-huh. Yes, yes. <laughs> so you, made it, you said something about an arborist. Mm-hmm. And can you tell the folks what an arborist does? Yes. Yeah, so that is somebody who comes out, right? They are credentialed to come out and assess trees, mm-hmm. right? So you can't just, in the city of Atlanta, you can't just take down any tree that you right. want. Um, so you have to come out and you have to assess whether it's dead, dying, or disease, mm-hmm. or hazardous. Um, and that's whether it's in a certain, you know, feet, five feet from your home's foundation, um, whether the tree is actually diseased or dying. You have to assess all of these mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. Then get a permit to take it down and then take it down. If it, it doesn't qualify for any of these things, then you, you have to actually pay to take the tree down <laughs> and then replant new trees. So it's an expensive <laughs> process. Right. So. so, so you know, that is a point where, okay, I'm, I'm, try, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to lean in, lead into the uh-huh. wholesalers. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of times, investors, I'm going to say investors, mm-hmm. don't take into account these costs. Yes when they're saying, well, it'll only take $30,000 yes. to rehab this house. Oh, those are fun. And you got yeah. five huge trees around the house. <laughs> Nobody ever looks at like, the cost of what it takes. That's $25,000 <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> in trees. <treats. laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and that's the thing. Like, we walked a couple of houses, and, you know, and I'm, I'm teaching uh, my partner about how to assess, you know, properties and things like that. The first thing before you go inside the house, if there's yeah. huge trees out, you pretty much got an idea Cha-ching. of what exactly what it's going to cost before you even get inside. Yeah. You know, and, and that's the thing. I think a lot of investors, mm-hmm. wholesalers, <laughs> 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 don't take into yeah. account those costs. Yeah, yeah. So an arborist is someone that does all the things that you said. Yeah. Who pays that person to come out? The investor. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> who pays for everything? Absolutely. Let's be real. Absolutely I mean, who right. pays for everything? Literally everything. So they're coming out just to see if this tree can be taken down. Yes. And you have to pay for that. Yes. Because that's part of the permitting process. Yes. Then you pay for the permit. Then you pay for the take it down. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, 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 yes. And yeah. I, I want to make that point, And I want to make it clear for people who are doing rehabs mm-hmm. um, or whatever they're, whatever they're doing. I mean, especially as it relates to rehabbing. Yeah. Um, and wholesalers who look at a property with limited knowledge about what yeah. it takes to rehab a house, first of all. Absolutely. And they don't take into account yeah. that the tree's got to come down. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. This is one thing Mohar and I are talking about all the time because we have a unique value add as a wholesaler mm-hmm. because we've expanded wholesaling a lot. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. And essentially it was out of just the state of the market, but also how many houses can you build Do you ki- with one construction manager. Absolutely. That's another story. <laughs> right. We're going to be growing, getting some project managers. Um, but it was also about unleashing the reins for Mohar because where mm-hmm. his juice and where his passion is, is in wholesaling, bringing yes. the deal together. Mm-hmm. And there's so many opportunities out there, you know, throughout mm-hmm. Atlanta, even outside the perimeter. And, um, projects that we wouldn't rehab ourselves because they're too far away or because we have too much on our plate. And so it just kind of organically happened where it was like, we have these opportunities, let's actually monetize them and offer them because Mm -hmm. we see the vision, right, of what they could be and the value of them, but also we understand the rehab costs. Yes. So that's what was so yes. key, you know, like we have such experience building new and rehab. And so it was about taking what we know this is going to take to build this house out mm. and then being able to offer it, you know, um, you know, to other investors to build that. So as a rehabber, we can assess, OK, we have a price per square foot. And that's mm. when your price per square foot's come in, because I don't know you know what an investor if they're going to put crown in the house or not crown in the house Mm -hmm. but based off of what we would build it for right Mm -hmm. and not to brag but our homes always sell for highest price per square foot okay you know what you know that's not bragging so so what we're going to build it for Mm -hmm. is a realistic number you know it's not like we cheap out on our rehab so if we were going to build it at this then we can offer it um to everybody else for that and so um we take into consideration those things so okay there are multiple trees all right, that's a certain added cost, you Absolutely. know, to the rehab. Mm-hmm. So, um, so that's part of our, you know, um, acquisition strategy, analyzing all those things because yes. that's what you know people have, you know, bad mouth wholesalers so, you have so a much. Acquisition strategy. Oh yeah, we got strategies for everything. Right. So, so, so listen, <laughs> that is that is excellent. Please pay attention to this, y'all. <laughs> so, would you say 
And this is this is the argument that I had, and and we're probably going to have this argument on Saturday because we're doing the state of wholesaling. Uh huh. Um, so, it, would you say it's important, or what what level of importance would you say it is for a wholesaler to understand what it costs to rehab a house? Oh, hugely important. Even if you have like the basics down, okay. Mm -hmm. So it's like if you have a lot of trees on the lot, just automatically knowing that's going to be a higher cost. Um, but if you have the basics of price per square foot, and it's easy to come up with that because you go to these meetups and stuff, you hear mm -hmm. a lot of contractors mm -hmm. or investors talk, what do you build that price per square foot? What do you build that? One of the things too is that so many of our acquisitions have come from wholesalers mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we've built amazing relationships with wholesalers throughout mm -hmm. the years, Mohar I should say. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so it's really about forming relationships, again, back to those partnerships, yes. those relationships yes. where it was educating them on why deals worked for us and why they didn't work for us and mm -hmm. so they took that knowledge and it informed them so they knew the value of, of the property they were putting out there so that's really key I'd say like for wholesalers 100% you know educating yourself in terms of the standardized cost to build things mm -hmm. um, and, and price per square foot is where you could start off um, so that when you have a rehabber coming to you and saying hey you know I can't build it at that that's ten dollars a square foot who yeah. can build at that nobody right. you know like then, then you have a conversation you're knowledgeable um about it and you can better sell a vision because that's what it is right yes try to sell the vision you can yes. sell the property all day long right if the numbers work the numbers work but if you can sell a vision you got a lot more buyers on a vision oh my goodness <laughs> listen listen you, you're saying what i've been beating the yeah. drum about for a while so and and, and that's where and I don't know, I guess, and I'm going to use this perspective. This is probably what they consider old school wholesale. Uh -huh, uh -huh. When we, what I learned when we wholesaled some 10, 15 years ago yeah. was selling the vision. Yeah. Selling the person that you're, you're, you're selling the property to, mm -hmm. not only just to get your fee out of it, but selling them on the vision of what could potentially happen with the yeah. property. And that comes with, you know, packaging it, getting pictures, mm -hmm. getting, you know, looking at the square footage of the house, what's selling in the neighborhoods, those types of things. Yeah. And giving some vision mm -hmm. of what this property could potentially sell for. Yeah. The new age wholesaler doesn't care. Yeah. It's like, you make up your mind. This address. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. How much will you pay me for? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, they oh. set their price, though. Yeah. They set a oh, price that they true. want that's to. True. Yeah. That's but, true. but the question then becomes, if, and now, I mean, we're still working on formulas. Mm -hmm. If we're working on formulas, how do you determine the price that you're asking is a reasonable price for an end buyer to pay for? Mm -hmm. If you have no idea what it costs to yeah. repair it, okay. your yeah. ARV is sketchy at best. Yeah. How do you determine that your price... You're pulling it from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere and it ain't you know it's not not knowledge based right yes and yes, then, yes and yes. it's also because then it's not relationship building you know like oh. if I, if i mohar is a wholesaler right you, so he you, could you speak to me do this. a show on thursday now <laughs> <laughs> come have to do this again tomorrow he could speak to this a whole lot better than me um, because he's built these relationships yes, right yes. but if i was a wholesaler um i would want as many investors in my phone as possible that were go to that I, I wouldn't have yes. to send it out on a buyer's list. I wouldn't have to, you know, market the hell out of this or sorry, I said hell but That's okay. flyers, <laughs> you know, all these things. I wouldn't have to go all these meetups put out flyers. I could just call a few investors that mm -hmm. I know can assess it this quickly and will close, will perform, Absolutely. know the value, Absolutely. all these things. And we we prided ourselves, if that's the word, on, on being that investor for so many wholesalers mm -hmm. for so long. Um, and so now we're in the other role, which makes it, you know, it works. Because once you've stepped in somebody's shoes, you understand the perspective. Yes. So, yes. so that's what's really key. It's about building that relationship with investors so that you are providing them a vision, like you said. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it informs them. Again, it's the same concept with contractors, right? It helps them make a decision. Because yes. they, they don't have to go out to the property um, to necessarily put on their contract because they have all these pictures you sent them. Yes. You know, you sent them comps and <laughs> real comps too. <laughs> Not crazy comps. Right. Okay, real comps, right? Because we know yes. that happens. That actually 
you know, would be realistic of what the sale price of this home could be. Mm -hmm. So you set it up for them, especially with all new, all these new investors that are in the market right now. They need that. They yes. need that to be spoon fed for Absolutely. them so that they can make a decision better. So it's like having the, the public, the new investors out there that you're providing that presentation, just like you were talking, the old school vision. <laughs> and then also having those relationships with those investors that are just a phone call that maybe just need an address and yes. they can assess it themselves so yeah. so that okay that brings about a couple other questions okay. um, as a contractor yeah. well let, let me let me ask the investor question first okay. as an investor who happens to be a contractor yes. mm -hmm. um, what is the average I guess um, the average ROI or return on investment mm -hmm. that you'd like to get mm -hmm. for each property that you are buying as an investor mm -hmm. I mean, of course, your contractor price is going to be in there, but yeah, yeah. for for an, an investor that's buying from a wholesaler or a seller, whoever, whoever the case may be, mm -hmm. what is your your um, your price that you want to earn? Percentage, yeah. Your percentage that you want to earn? Yeah, in the yeah. End? So as an investor, you know, it varies. I mean, you have a mm -hmm. lot of educational programs out there that are teaching you like 10 to 15 percent. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We we have much higher percentages, but that's because we build um, a lot more like we mm -hmm. fully gut mm -hmm. our rehabs. Mm -hmm. We have homes that we take down to the foundation and then completely reframe that I'm doing it. You know, on the west side right now. So we we put a lot into our homes. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So in turn, we have higher percentages, and we also are very clear about you know the the quality over the quantity. We don't do a crazy amount of rehabs or builds at any one time. So the return on our investment needs to be high on each one yes. of them. We're yes. not a bulk play, um, you know, builder. Mm -hmm. uh, and so so that's why we spend more money on quality. We spend more money on design and in turn, we get more profit. Um, we never bank on it. Right. Cause we mm -hmm. always bank on what, you know, the, the comps are sure. out there. But in terms of our formulas, um, we're shooting 20 percent, you know, like that's what mm -hmm. we're comfortable mm -hmm. with. Um, and it's gravy if we're above that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So so uh, you're looking for a net profit of, of 20%. Yeah, absolutely. So in, in some of what people teach, as yeah. you mentioned, um, and, 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 and I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, you know, kind of brushing this with a broad stroke, uh -huh. if you will. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what people teach that 10 or 15% mm -hmm. is good. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Now, and, and then when you look at something like that, and then you look at the prices that we're getting we're seeing people offer properties for mm -hmm. you know wholesalers I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give them a break a little bit but yeah. wholesalers are <laughs> they're offering these properties at certain prices and us as investors have it in our mind that we need to have a net profit yeah. of a certain amount and when we see that it's going to cost this much to fix it up this is what the value is when we're done these types of things and then we look at cost you know the agents cost and all those types yeah. of things um, what how do you address something like that mm -hmm. from from a, from an investor and contractor perspective to someone who's selling the property mm -hmm. it just happens to be a wholesaler yeah yeah <laughs> well it's kind of like the tv shows right mm -hmm. the tv shows pretty much <laughs> give you a breakdown purchase price rehab sold price this is your profit right, you know they right. don't include all of the yes, extras that are yes, in there yes yes holding so, costs all yeah, of those yeah it's crazy like taxes hello taxes right, are, taxes are yeah. utilities so um it, it's really just about again you know educating like mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. really looking at it as an opportunity to educate and say hey this is not, just because the rehab cost is this that doesn't mean that i'm going to be getting a return on my investment like you say Absolutely. so so it's really about you know educating them letting them know all the additional costs associated mm -hmm, with them mm -hmm. having them build that in um you know i think in that presentation in that vision is mm -hmm. this is what we believe it'll cost the cost will be to rehab this home mm -hmm. but then this is on top of that your holding costs and whatnot and and i think you know wholesalers it's it's bulk play right like yes. you're doing a whole lot of marketing that you're funneling in a whole lot of leads mm -hmm. um and then you're putting out properties that you get under contract so you have to have it systemized you have have to have it based off of formula so you can easily do that by coming up with some you know percentages for those holding costs percentages for you know um, obviously agent costs and things like that mm -hmm. which will uh, any investor is going to respect 
respect that so much, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. They're going to see you as, as an accredited, knowledgeable wholesaler that, that they want to actually look, even if their numbers don't line up, even if they believe, you know, the value, the ARV is different, um, still the work that you put in, you know, and the work can be very streamlined in terms of you got a spreadsheet, you just plug in those numbers with those percentages, um, but the work that you did, they're going to value and they're going to take your email or your address that you text them or whatever it is a lot more seriously because you <laughs> have done that. So, <laughs> am I speaking to you? <laughs> oh my goodness, you are speaking to my spirit right now. <laughs> good, good. Because, you know, you know and, and then, okay, we got to get back into our contract or the rest of the conversation. <laughs> but I got to say this though, and we're going to discuss this at the State of Wholesaling Revisited this Saturday. Um, but but the, the thing is, I see so many wholesalers that are now sending an address. Mm-hmm. Some of them are not even sending an address. Oh, yeah. Don't you love that? <laughs> <laughs> and then they Mohar gets calls all the time. I got this property. It's blah, 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 blah. Give me an address. But it's blah, 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 blah. Right. I, I need an address <laughs> at the bare minimum. Give me an address. And then in five minutes, he'll figure it all out. He's got three screens. You know? Right, right, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> they need that. But then, then they tell you to do your own due diligence. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't have Which an address. Is, oh, yeah, without an address, how the hell? <laughs> <All right. laughs> but no, that's. But and listen, I would have said the same thing. How the hell are we supposed to do that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. Um, so let's let's ask that. Let's ask, let's address uh-huh. that question. You know, this is something that we're going to probably rehash. When you get a property, when someone says, I mean, in, from an investor perspective, mm-hmm. when someone says, "Do your own due diligence," you know mm-hmm. that you're going to have to do that anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when they say it's non-refundable earnest money, I mean, what's what's your process? Mm-hmm. Help us help us a little bit. What's your process of doing your due diligence? Mm-hmm. And do you give the non-refundable earnest money before you do your due diligence, mm-hmm. or do you do your due diligence first mm-hmm. and then give the non-refundable earnest money? It's tricky because mm-hmm. there's not one answer, right? I know. Um, we've been around for a I minute, know. so you're doing so great with all these other questions. <laughs> I Listen, know. I'm, I'm not even a I'm, wholesaler, I'm, y'all. I'm, like, I'm playing devil, <laughs> devil's advocate. She's doing so great. She almost said Glenn said. No, she said it. <laughs> I, yes, I'm, you know, just to disclose, I'm not a wholesaler. Right. I don't work for wholesalers. <laughs> I build houses, y'all. Um, but this is just, you know, as a company, this is what we do. And so I'm, I'm privy to all this information. But we've been around for a minute. So, mm-hmm. um, so we're able to do our due diligence um, with a, a level of speed, you know, that mm-hmm. a new investor doesn't have Mm -hmm. Um, and then we're also able to put money non-refundable behind that due diligence because we are sure about you know what an ARV or is going to be or what we can do with Mm -hmm. a particular lot or what have you so so it's different for us you know Mm -hmm. Um, so it's not something that you know and Mohar said this as well it's not something you necessarily would recommend um, to everyone put down Mm -hmm. you know hefty um, uh, non-refundables on however it does speak you know, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. it speaks to your confidence in, in being able to close it. Mm-hmm. It speaks to your validity as an investor. It's it's mm-hmm. an impression that you have. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it's a very subjective opinion. I've heard people say like, no, never, you know, 500,000, that's it. Mm-hmm. We've put some hefty earnest money. When it was that competitive of a property, mm-hmm. um, we look at all the terms of a contract and ways that we can make it, mm-hmm. um, our offer more competitive. Um, and get the deal closed. So, so we've definitely put down larger, larger earnest money deposits. However, um, there are other times where we needed some time to figure things out. Mm-hmm. We need to go to the city. We need to figure things out. So we've said, hey, give me two days. Give me a few days um, right. Right. Uh, to figure it out. And then um, we, we've done it that way as well. So it's not a catch-all type of thing. It really depends on, on the project, your level of confidence with it, mm-hmm. um, all those things. Yeah. Okay, so we, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna turn back to where we started. Shift now? Okay. We're gonna turn back to where we started. Okay, so um, so as a contractor, we're going back there yes. now. <laughs> um, what are some of the the major points that you, that you would say that an investor needs to know? And I think we kind of touched on it a little bit. 
what are some of the major points? Should a person, I mean, they should know what they're getting into, what mm -hmm. kind of project they're doing. Yeah. They should have a scope of work yeah. to, pre to present to mm -hmm. the contractor. Yeah. Um, what, how does a person learn how to do a scope of work? What is a scope of work? Yeah, yeah that's, so that's, that's, that's pretty much it's your blueprint for your home. Mm -hmm. It's your every, it outlines everything that you want to do with the home. Mm -hmm. Even input some design specs um, in there. So it, it's the biggest thing that I will recommend to everyone is inspections, right? Get Establish a good relationship with a home inspection company or a home inspector and then get every single home inspected. What it does is it provides you this report and you mm -hmm. then use mm -hmm. this report to inform your scope of work. So we wow. do it initially wow. on every single home mm -hmm. um, because here's the thing. Yes, I'm a contractor. Yes, I've been doing this for many years. Mm -hmm. Do you think I go into every single rehab and crawl around every single inch of the crawl Probably space? Not. No, yeah. I don't. <laughs> it depends, you know, how I'm feeling that day, right. if I'm in right. a rush, you know, what's <laughs> going on. Now, at some point throughout the rehab process, I do do that. I pride mm -hmm. myself on that. I'm not going to send people in to do work unless I've seen yeah. with my eyes what it needs to get done, and then I'm able to check it, you know. Um, Otherwise, they'll tell you, you need uh, floor joists. Uh, yes. that you've never even seen before. It's a pet peeve of mine, you know, yeah. and there are certain things on inspection reports that always get flagged, like having debris in your crawl space or your vapor barrier not covering the ground mm -hmm. the whole mm -hmm. way, or oh, um, say you that. have something, you know, like in, in your foundation wall that a little bit of patching could have stopped it, you mm -hmm. know, from getting flagged, some entry point for yeah. vermin or something to get <clears> in. So, so all those things we're trying to avoid on a, a buyer's inspection report. So we'll get it initially, right? Mm -hmm. and, and they're lengthy reports, and yeah. then I use utilize that for my scope of work because even just mm -hmm. a walk even when I spend a good hour in a home assessing all of it um, they spend two or three hours really assessing it mm -hmm. climbing on the roof seeing the condition of it you know like giving me a lot more detail than I would gather myself yes um, so yes. that's what I do initially then on the sales side um, we have them come through again and then uh, they provide that same report but this time they're looking at everything fresh a fresh rehab a mm -hmm. whole lot better quality and so they're looking at it from the per position and perspective of a buyer so yes. I want them yes. to look for and see anything wrong that a buyer's um, inspector is going to see so I can address it and have that be part of my punch list because I've also gotten attached to the home right yes. I've been it's been in my life for three months right, right? right it's yeah. my baby <laughs> you can't always see where your baby is looking a little exactly. ugly you know? <laughs> right? so you need to actually have somebody else come in and say hey you missed this or you know remember mm -hmm. to button up on this or do this so that's a key part of our process also good stuff good stuff yeah so now, and that's the thing that a lot of, you know, a lot of new investors, they have no idea what a scope of work. So, yeah. you know, and now we're in the funding business. Mm -hmm. So we have people come to us and they give us an application and uh -huh. things like that. And we ask for the scope of work. And yeah. they say, well, what's that? Yeah, like, yeah. Well, how are you yeah. doing a rehab on a project? You don't know what a scope of work is. And they're so varied. You yeah. know, like there are a lot of educational programs who will provide templates and stuff for yes. scopes of work. Yes. Um, but they're, you know, I always joke because Mohar scopes of work were like little... 20 sentences, you know, yeah. when he was doing remote <laughs> rehabbing, and it was just like, convert, you know, this two bedroom into a three bedroom, yes. two bath. And I'm like, really? Really? Yeah. <laughs> like, that was the what level of detail. detail in there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so they're a lot more detailed now, you mm -hmm. know, and I think the more detailed, the better because mm -hmm. it can be a reference point. Um, but it could be as simple, you know, for, for an initial walkthrough before you've made a lot of decisions as those 20 sentences. Yes. Or if you yes. have a relationship that that you built with a contractor they know what you like and you've built several houses together or rehab several houses mm -hmm. together then you don't need a detailed scope of work you could have you know um 20 lines that say this is what we're doing high yes. level and yes. they'll know all the details mm -hmm. so they can vary yeah i, I used to that, that, was, that was my my i had 20 sentences before and actually yeah. 10 it sometimes like listen you know i want to do the whole kitchen yeah. rehab the kitchen just scrape it make it look pretty <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> you know, look, put a new bathroom over here. That's all we yeah, need to do. <laughs> yeah, make it work. <laughs> so, I mean, but now, I mean, like I said, I find now that having the designs and all that yeah. in place, yeah. you know, sometimes I'll go through and just plaster it on the wall. Yes. You know, so even the contractors, subcontractors yeah. can see, you know, this yeah. is what we need to do for this, yeah. you know, this you area. You know how many scopes of work of mine are behind people's sheetrock right yeah. now? Because <laughs> I nail them to the framing, you know? I nail them wherever I can so people can see them. Yes, you know what yes, happens? yes. Drywall goes 
<laughs> but yes, it's key. You provide that information. That's a, that's another point too. It's like you have a general contractor that's managing mm -hmm. your project as an investor, um, and hopefully they're a good project manager. But a lot of contractors aren't, right? right so it's right, like right. helping them um, to actually get that information as well. Yeah. So not every contractor is sitting every morning in front of their email where they can print out something you send them. So, right. so every time I used to walk my sites when I had contractors managing them, I would bring printouts of things and mm -hmm. I would post them mm -hmm. places. So guess what? Their plumber, when he showed up, would know what the floor plan looks like and where the toilet's going in, whether it's a double van or vanity or single vanity and what have you. So it was just about, again, spoon feeding and getting that information to the people who are doing the work, empowers them to get their job done. Great, so. great, great. So as a as a contractor yourself, is that something that you would appreciate that someone oh, would do? Oh, definitely. Got yeah. It, like I, you know, the thing of it is, is that one day when we do offer build services, because it, it's, it's a gap that I see. I see a lot of investors um, that really need somebody to, to help them kind of systemize and educate them along the way when it comes to this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to be key. It's going to be having a structure and a system where this is the information we need so far in advance before we ever need it mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. so that it keeps the project flowing, keeps the project flowing. Um, so getting that information to your contractor is key, setting up the vision for them 100%. Good stuff, good stuff. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about, um, so scope of work and spec sheet. Yeah. So at what point do you present the spec sheet? Is that something that's on the beginning? Yeah. Or wait, mm -hmm. maybe we should tell, what's a spec sheet? Okay, so <laughs> a spec sheet, y'all. A spec sheet is pretty much the whole design of your home. Um, mm -hmm. So it's it's going to list your, your, your tile, your grout, your paint colors, um, your lighting, your plumbing fixtures, all that good stuff. Um, so a lot of times people will incorporate a lot of the design specs into their scope of work, which mm -hmm. is perfectly mm -hmm. fine. Um, we use our spec sheets a little bit differently um, because we build in-house, so we have them separated out. Okay. Um, we mm -hmm. use our spec sheets to offer to the um, home buyer mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. so that they actually are informed and empowered uh, to take care of their home. They have paint colors. They have grout colors. Great. Great um, if Great they have stuff. to change a light bulb, they can easily look up the model of the light fixture and know what kind of light mm -hmm. bulb it needs. So, um, so we use them a little bit, and it also stores the, each design of each one of our homes. Wow. Um, because wow. we pride ourselves on our design and we'd love to one day be able to offer those designs to somebody again mm -hmm. side note something I'm working on right? okay. <laughs> so um, so that's what we use them for but if you have a contractor who's sourcing all of your material right mm -hmm. then um, absolutely giving them that spec sheet whether it's separated or together mm -hmm. in advance will be key now maybe you don't have all the lighting and plumbing fixtures picked out that's okay. You put to be determined and mm -hmm. you highlight it and you know those things that are things that you need to make decisions on based off a certain point. And then you ask your contractor, when do I need, when do you need this by? You know, mm -hmm. you don't wait mm -hmm. for them to tell you because if there are a lot of contractors who are excellent, excellent builders, they have construction knowledge, like years, generations of construction knowledge, but the project management skill set of being able to educate and then ask for information from investors well ahead of time is not something that all of them possess, right? right. So right. a lot of times you'll, you'll, you know, it never fails that valves are a huge thing. Your house gets framed out, right? Yeah. And then your plumbing valves, your plumber <laughs> comes in to rough it in. And then guess when you needed to make your decision about what plumbing fixtures at that point yes. and, and investors don't know that right because right, they're like right. oh we're just that framing like ha, ha, that's that's later when yes. you install that but yes. it, no it's behind the walls your I valves have matter that problem all the time yeah <laughs> so i started ordering my valves you know mm -hmm. like so many years ago with conja and i would have them on site for them mm -hmm. because if not the plumber would buy the cheapest valve from home depot and it yes. wouldn't come in chrome or some color that I wanted mm -hmm. or it wouldn't have a nice modern design because we love modern design mm -hmm. that I wanted so I learned really quickly that that's something I wanted to get it in front of and I knew I needed to do that early during framing um, of mm -hmm. the home. Mm -hmm. Good stuff, good stuff. Yeah. So I mean we're, we're, we're coming up on a little time but mm -hmm. I, I'm, I want to I want to keep going. You got time? Yeah, yeah, okay, I got right. time. So we got we, we got to make up for the time that I know we had those technical, technical difficulties. difficulties so yeah. we'll we'll make up for it. That's okay. <laughs> so what is the what is what for from a investor perspective? Mm -hmm. What is the how how does an investor get organized when they're first getting started with a with a project? So yeah. what are, what are some of the steps 
you know, I'm a new investor. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what a scope of work is. I have no yeah. idea what a spec sheet is. But I want to go buy this house that I'm buying from one of my favorite wholesalers. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> they said it's this, that, or the other, the pricing. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the steps that I should take as a new investor yeah. to get to make my, my, my transition into this yeah. investment and rehab world a little smoother? Yeah. What, what would be some of the key things? Well, first of all, you should not be doing it until you've been educated. <laughs> you have to have some level right. of education. It can, mm -hmm. And it cannot be, I saw it on TV. It cannot that can't, be. That can't cannot work. be. No, it doesn't work that way. You know, that's how you lose your shirt. Right. Um, so, so you have to have some level of education. Mm -hmm. And we are huge believers in investing in education. Yes. So whatever, yes. you know, form it is, you know, um, Mohar for many years taught for fortune builders. Um, mm -hmm. And they're an amazing program. Um, so, so if people want to invest in that program, um, they can invest in that program. But there are many other educational programs as well at varying price points, you know. Right. Um, so investing in something um, so that you get a baseline education of what's needed to move forward. Because you can't it. do it blindly. You can't Absolutely. do it blindly. Um, and so that's what's going to give you, you know, not only your assessment of, a, you know, what all the information you need to assess the value of a property, acquire a property, but then what you would need to build in order to get the value um, in it, the property. So that's mm -hmm. really key, you know, investing mm -hmm. in your education is 100%. We're huge believers in it. Yeah. So until you invest in your education, don't look at a scope of work. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can see, you know, I mean, you can look online for sample scopes of work mm -hmm. and, and, and pretty much know like, okay, sco a scope of work, a spec sheet, you know, there are certain formulas to, to analyze a property and the value for the property, mm -hmm. certain price, you know, uh, per square foot to build that, um, things of this nature, you know, what neighborhood values are what, what design level you need to have in God, each one God. of those mm -hmm. uh, neighborhoods. Do all that research, 100%. Um, but it's good to have some kind of guidance, you know, right. something guiding you along the way. Good stuff, good yeah, stuff. Yeah. Uh, so so I'm, an, I'm an investor, I want to do a rehab. What's yeah. an average price per square foot that I should yeah. pay for so a rehab? It, it varies, like we said, for all those different finish levels and everything mm -hmm. like that. We're building at 70 to 75 for our gut rehabs, price okay. per square foot. Um, so that's kind of what our standard is um, as far as going in and doing the quality level of rehab that we know mm -hmm. we're going to want to do. Having those nice design touches in the home, some wow features in the home. Um, so that's our price per square foot for rehabs. When you're talking about new construction, you get up there, you know, 100, mm -hmm. 110. 10 all depends on the finish level mm -hmm. um, it can get even higher you're building higher-end homes 120 100 you know like mm -hmm. it, it can mm -hmm. get up there so it really really varies um, we've done a couple projects where it's a lot less than that because we didn't have to fully gut it they're built in the 80s built in the 90s um, and so we're able to keep a lot and so you know I think the cheapest we've built um, barring a couple really smaller rehabs is around 40, 45 or something. Mm. Um, so, so it depends on your square footage too. That's key as well. So mm. if you have okay. a lot more square footage, um, the higher up you go on square footage, the, the ratio should go down. Yes because you only got one kitchen in the house, right? right. The most expensive mm -hmm. square footage in the house, there are certain things you only have one mm -hmm. of. You only have one kitchen for most houses anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and then your bathrooms, you know, maybe you have a lot bigger house, but it's the same bathroom count as another house. Um, so mm -hmm. you might have just slightly different square footage because not everything is built based off of square footage pricing. Got it, so. got it. So what about additions? Like if I got an add on yeah. 500 square feet. Yeah, yeah. So that's when it varies too. Where they're tricky, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be somewhere in between there. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. you know, if you take your 75 square foot and your 100 square foot, somewhere in between there, based off of the size of the addition, based off of the condition of the existing home, are you tying into an existing roof? Are you having to take off the roof and do a whole new roof? There's a lot of variables in in all that that mm -hmm. would definitely you know drastically change that price per square foot so that's where it's a little tricky same thing for pop tops i'm, I'm asking some questions to scare some people <laughs> <laughs> it's a thousand dollars a thousand dollars price per square I'm foot just <laughs> no, but you know, and, and, and i'm just you know i'm looking at some of the people i mean even some of my clients that i work with yeah they don't have a clue about a lot of these things that we're talking mm -hmm. about and 
when they watch the television shows and they look at the lights, nice fixtures, like yeah. nice, uh, nice light, light fixtures. fixtures yeah. yeah, I was trying to say that. <laughs> um, they look at stuff like that. You know, the finishes in the bathrooms and things like that, and they think. Well, it can't cost that much because they paid this much for it on television. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's not, that's how not the case. Right. That's not the case at all. <laughs> yeah, it, go, it goes up there. And that's mm. why it's key also to provide all that information for your contractors. Mm. You know, like allowances are really great too, you mm. know, um, as contractors um, providing an allowance for your investor that says, okay, d assessing, do you, do you want low end, middle grade, high end light fixtures or plumbing fixtures in this home? And then based off of what they say, providing them an allowance and saying, okay, you have to pretty much make picks based off of this mm -hmm. amount of money. Mm -hmm. And then anything you spend over it, obviously, is a change order and whatnot. So those are ways to, to figure that out. So should the investor allow the contractor to buy the material or should the investor buy the material? You know, that's a tricky one mm -hmm. um, because mm -hmm. if it's going to be easier for your contractor to purchase the material. They mm -hmm. know when they need it. They can easily get it. They don't have to come to you to get it. Mm -hmm. But then that mm -hmm. means you are limited in terms of what material you can actually source because contractors mm -hmm. are not um, always. Some are, you know, ones, contractors who are also designing homes and doing well doing it will source in other places mm -hmm. other than Home Depot mm -hmm. and Lowe's. Mm -hmm. But most contractors are sourcing from, you know, big box stores. Got and so it, then you're it. limited to what you have there. If it's a lower end rehab, you can make beautiful homes from Home Depot on Lowe's, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But if you're looking to spend a little bit more, you know, you can't find these pendants in Home Depot or Lowe's. Right, right, right. Um, then you, you have so to go we, out and sort. So these were for progressive lighting. Uh, <laughs> that, that's so, not for y'all. That's, that's for me. <laughs> yeah, I love these pendants, yeah. But they were from progressive lighting, So, mm. um, and they have a whole lighting um you know, a showroom that I went and picked them out on. Um, but pretty much, yeah, that's, that's the nuts and bolts of it. So, so what I would do often is I would have the contractor source um, the bulk of the material, and there were other things that I would source uh, myself. So it was like a transition to get to building in-house. Um, you know, we went from contractors doing everything to, okay, I'm going to sub out these things, sub out cabinet, all the finished subs mm. for me. Mm -hmm. So tiles, cabinets, countertops, all those things, because they were so design focused and the cabinetry, the kitchen layout needed to be designed in advance and, and revisions made and all this stuff and mm -hmm. worked on. Mm -hmm. I started doing that on my own. And that's what I would recommend for any investors. It's like start to take an interest um, and do research on the things that are going to increase the value of your home mm -hmm. um, because a, a flooring contractor or a general contractor is going to source the flooring and um, there's not a whole lot of difference between red oak purchase from one place from another place. Mm -hmm. However, your difference in countertops, your difference in lighting fixtures, your quality of your cabinetry, your layout of your cabinetry is all really key to the mm -hmm. final design of your home. So that's where I would start um, in terms of if you're going to outsource some things or take some things off of your contractor's plate, start there. Things that bring your money, kitchens and bathrooms. Got it, got it, got it. So, so, so in that you're saying so things like lighting fixtures mm -hmm. things like that your cabinets like i mean i know you can't get these cabinets at a home depot no 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 yeah. definitely not. so how do i find yeah. where so there to are get a whole cabinets? lot of norcross is cabinet heaven okay yeah. <laughs> norcross has <laughs> lots of cabinet suppliers and there are tons of suppliers there and they'll design the kitchen for I'm, you I'm, I'm a cabinet supplier too oh okay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, Shameless plug. Yeah, so you know then, you know, yeah, they, yeah. they all get the cat, the material from the same warehouses, yes. you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. but it, it's a matter of building a relationship with a supplier um, mm -hmm. so that you can have the kitchen design, the layout design, the features you want, trash pullouts, lazy Susan, definitely mm -hmm. soft clothes, soft glide, yes, all yes. these features that home buyers love, you can ensure they're in um, your design of your kitchen. So you're saying you're saying again some great stuff. That's why I don't want to end this show, but we got <laughs> I know we got to end it in a minute. But um, so as a as an investor, how do I find what is the best thing to do in a house? Mm. So if I'm looking at comps, mm -hmm. uh, comparables, should I automatically and and you know again I'm I'm trying to ask the question that people might ask. Mm -hmm. um, Are people asking questions? People haven't asked any questions yet. I mean they're saying oh. some stuff, but we had some technical difficulty. Yeah. I have to look at the camera. I'm so bad at that, y'all. I'm sorry. I, I, that, need to turn I know. Right? That's I keep okay. looking at you. You're I a know. real person. Listen, I'm not used to camera. We're, we're, we're talking. <laughs> 
<laughs> so listen, ask some questions, y'all. Ask some questions. I mean, this is for your benefit. Um, and, and she's not charging us yet. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so as a person that's looking to do a rehab, mm -hmm. and I look at some pictures of comparables and things like that. Yeah. Um, when I see, you know, these types of cabinets or these types of lighting fixtures, mm -hmm. Is that what I should aim for mm -hmm. in the rehab that I'm doing? Or should I go for the, you know, should a Home Depot mm -hmm. um, ceiling fan be okay yeah, yeah. to go in the house? Um, well, you should definitely aim for where your comps are at and mm -hmm. then step it up. That's, it. that's our Got rule it. of thumb. Mm -hmm. um, because you want to set yourself apart, right? If mm -hmm. you're going to um, potentially list for a higher price than your comps, which should always be your goal, right? Yes. Then yes. it should be warranted, right? Because mm -hmm. you've spent more money or you've, you know, added in these sizzle design features um, so that it attracts more buyers. So, um, and don't get me wrong, Home, Depot's, Home Depot and Lowe's are great for lots of stuff. I still get a bunch of fans and stuff from them um, for, for certain price point homes, I'll source everything from them because mm -hmm. it's convenient, right? right. Um, but certain other homes, they're just go-to things that I just purchase from other suppliers. So um, yeah, definitely assess your comps. There are mm -hmm. some quick things um, that I'm always looking at our comps. Do they have hardwoods through, throughout? Are they real hardwoods? Are they engineered? You know, um, What kind of countertops do they have? Mm -hmm. What's the lighting package look like? Do, are there recess um, throughout the home? You know, one of the things we'll walk through homes and it's always like, ooh, is when you see an investor spend way too little or way too much, mm -hmm. right? When yes. it's like they'll take a home <laughs> and the value doesn't warrant recessed lights throughout the entire right. house and you're like, cha-ching, cha-ching, you know, like you're seeing how much money that wasn't yes. necessary, right? Mm -hmm. And that's profit loss. So it's all about assessing just enough that's necessary and maybe just stepping it up a little bit more, you know, mm -hmm. with some kind of wow feature. Um, uh, but you definitely want to be at your comps or higher in terms of your level of design. And this is something that's key too, um, because, you know, most investors are not going out and spending tons of money on um, consultation fees for designers. And so mm -hmm. it's really key that as an investor, you don't build the home for yourself to live in it. Okay, like yes, every single one of your homes that's, that's are gonna have key. your design <laughs> touch on them, right? I love modern design. Contemporary is where my passion is, where I gravitate towards. So all of our homes have that overall feel to them. However, nothing should be so personalized or so type specific that the greatest amount of buyers aren't gonna be interested in that home. Mm. So that's really, really key. You know, we'll see a lot of investors go in with these like crazy fancy backsplashes or, you know, all these accents and stuff and we're like, oh it's cool or maybe it's eh, you know, too yeah. much. <laughs> but but is is the is your buyer pool, is the most amount of buyers gonna appeal to this, right, you know? So there's right, certain right. things we just stick to that even though we might love it, you know and then as you get more comfortable, you take a little risk, you Got know, it. like mm -hmm. I've done black trim in a couple houses, you know, and that's you definitely probably get away with it. <laughs> I got away with it. But, you know, the, the second house I did it in, I was like, yeah, this is a bit much in this one. Um, but the point is that that was a little bit of a risk, you know, it was mm -hmm. a calculated mm -hmm. risk because I was trying to set it apart and make it shine and make it feel more design and contemporary. Um, but nonetheless, it's a little bit more of a risk because not as many buyers are going to appeal to that. Mm -hmm. It may potentially turn off some buyers. So so, so we're, we're talking about the things that you're talking about, you know, finishes and things like that. At what point is it being over improved? Mm -hmm. So yeah. when you're trying to, of course, you're you're designing to, you know, step it up a little bit yeah. from the from the comps. Mm -hmm. Are you, is there some point where you over improve? Of course. Where it doesn't, it doesn't match dollar for dollar? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it does, like what I was saying, the recess lights. Like it doesn't make sense if none of your comps have recess lights Got it. Um, mm -hmm. in them. It does not make sense to go in and put recess lights everywhere. That's, you know, 75 bucks a pop. Like yes. that's crazy yes. expensive. Mm -hmm. So, so it's not necessary. That money could be put into something else. Right. It's right. also, um, the, the design and the quality of your project should be cohesive. You know, a lot of times you'll walk through investment properties and you see like incredibly high end um, lighting fixtures or plumbing fixtures and then you see that their front pad of their front porch is like crumbled up concrete. 
or something and you're like mm, <laughs> what you know there's like a disconnect here yes, yes. And, and so what the assumption is is oh the investor picked out all these fixtures but they ran out of money and this was under the contractor scope mm -hmm. or something so you know it didn't so it's about spreading um, the money throughout the project right. and investing in the quality of the construction and not just in your finishes because what's going to happen you're going to get an inspection report you're going to have to spend a whole lot of money on fixing various things so that's why quality is just as important as design because design will get them in the door yeah. but quality yeah. will make them put up the huge financial investment that it is for any home buyer to purchase your home and make it their home for how many generations are going to live there so how, how important is staging? Oh, very important. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, people don't have a vision. Um, that's a thing. It, even we don't have a, how many houses we've built and I walk through an empty house and it feels sparse or cold to me because it's more of a modern design. Mm -hmm. And then you put furniture in it and this house is a perfect example. You know, it's a very clean, streamlined design, yes, modern yes. design, but you put furniture in it and then it warms up. It's, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, that, and it, it makes sense. It's a story that makes sense because the home is the design backdrop to all of your furnishings. Right. It's all the lipstick, so it's incredibly important. It's also incredibly important when your room size is too small um, because people <laughs> cannot envision a queen size bed in a room that right. is too small, right. even if it can fit it. So you really have to set it up. So anytime we have smaller bedrooms, we set them up so that people know this is a true guest bedroom. This mm -hmm. is a queen size bed. It still feels spacious. So um, room, any spaces that are awkward, we mm -hmm. always stage um, because we want to show people this is an actual space, this is what you could do with it. Right, and even right. if they're not going to do that one thing, they'll do something else, you know, but it gives them an idea of, wow, this space is really utilized well, mm -hmm. you know. I had a house that I put on the market some years ago. Mm -hmm. I refused to stage it. I refused to put appliances in oh, it. I heard about it. I, I told you about that. <laughs> I did. I, think. I said no. I'm not going to do it. Yeah, yeah. I think Mohar told me about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. The house was on the market for nine months. Wow. I broke down and I staged it. Uh huh. I had three full price offers that the weekend wow. I staged it. Wow. I said all the money that I lost. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> and that's what happens. You want to save money at the end, right? Because it's yeah. going to cost you a few thousand to stage. Right. And you're like, okay, I'm over budget. I'm over this. I'm... Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. people don't r seem to grasp that that initial few thousand dollars is going to potentially make Absolute. you so much Absolute. more money on and, the sales Or side. save you thousand dollars. Yes, <laughs> of caring costs and not 100%. And professional photos. Yes. Ooh, yes. that's a pet peeve of ours, you know? You know, they're you... $150. Yes. Why don't people do that? <laughs> it, it does not make Sense. It does not make sense. Like why, it, no matter what the condition, what the state is, even if your home is in stage, which it yes. should always be, yes. but even if it isn't, professional photos just tell a story of your home. They sell your home. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was an expensive lesson that I yeah. learned. Yeah, you'll never do it again. Though. Never do it again. <laughs> Ever do it again. I said, oh, I think it only cost maybe, because I, I rented the furniture, so I yeah. spent $400 on the furniture. Oh, awesome. Um the person that's there, my wife did most of the staging, yeah, yeah. her and another guy, uh, they did the staging. So I, did, I didn't pay a whole yeah, lot for the staging. Yeah. Can't believe I got three full price offers and the house Great. flew off the market. Every house will be staged. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah, that's what it is with The lessons us. we learned. I, and I, you know, I don't like it when we don't get to stage a home because occasionally we'll sell a home before um, mm. it goes to market. Oh, yes. yes. And, and Mohar's always, <laughs> this, is, this is where, you know, like, it's a personal thing for me how attached I am to the home because I'm like I want to dress the home like I want I want the home space to be made up like I, I want to see my end and I tell him it's like you know working on a, a painting and um, somebody comes up to you mm. and you're 90% the way through and they're like we want to pay full right. price for your painting yeah, right, you're right. like okay but let me just let finish, me finish it she yeah. hasn't yeah. seen the and full and he's like you know this is a good right. thing right <laughs> Like, that's they right. might pay more it's if we a, stage it's it. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. But I'm like, oh, if it's staged, then it's gonna shine. Right, you know? right, like, right. So it, it's a it's a full story that I like to bring together, right? For, yes, to, yes. To, 
It's a vision, you know, we're creating for the everyone needs a vision. Everyone needs that's a vision. A, that's a perfect point. <laughs> <laughs> everyone, no matter what, you know, aspect, role you play in this industry, it's about creating a vision. Having yes. a vision for yourself and then sharing that vision for somebody else to empower them to work with you yes. um, or to help you make that vision come together. That is perfect. Yeah, that is yeah, perfect. Yeah. And we don't, nobody has asked any questions. I can't believe they're saying that. I'm, I'm thinking it's a technical difficulty. They're saying, it's, they're saying it the show is great. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Do you get an inspection with a full gut and after the project? I heard some investors do not until after. Oh, yeah, yeah. So um, there, there are the occasional homes that um, we know we're going in and we are reframing or redoing so much of the foundation or completely gutting the home out. And mm -hmm. so we might forego the inspection initially um, because okay. it's like, yeah. what's the point? We're right. not keeping any of it. So mm -hmm. it would just be insane to have a report that's so long. Um, so that's the only case that we will do that. Mm -hmm. um, however, if we have any intention of keeping anything, like if we're questioning the condition of the roof or any of the major home systems, if there's existing PVC, we want to know the condition of it or the foundation, any of those things, um, then we'll 100% um, get an inspection just to help inform us about those areas of the home. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Good question, good yeah. question. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, best investment is yourself. Great information. A must. Um, Aw, Faye. You're so sweet. <laughs> she says some of these wholesalers shaking my head. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk about wholesalers <laughs> anymore. In the next five minutes. Yeah, you can, you can have a hard time showing up on Saturday. <laughs> well, that, that's what that's what Saturday is about, though. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And listen, I'm bringing my boxing gloves, so uh, and I and I have my bulletproof vest on. So uh, bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. But no, I mean, I, I really want to. And actually, I think we'll. we'll I want to. Actually, I, I missed the time. I know you told me to. I'll do it now. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, you know, we're having such a great time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a time I'm supposed to tell people about what's going on. Yeah, go so, ahead. So um, Saturday, actually, let's talk about today. Today is Hump Day, and that's happening tonight with uh, Marcus Merritt yes. and I Patrick know. Grenier. I've been to get out that's today. actually happening today, um, and I just got rid of the thing of where it is. <laughs> um, so it's happening today. And if Marcus or Patrick is watching or anyone that knows where the event is tonight, please, please post, post it in the it, comments. Yes. Um, we want you guys to check that out. We'll be there. We'll be uh, taking a look at what's happening there. Uh, then tomorrow, I don't know what's happening tomorrow. Thursday. Deal Makers is happening tomorrow. Uh, Ramon Tooks Deal Makers is happening tomorrow. And Has and Wants is happening tomorrow. Uh, Joe Thompson. Um, I'm trying to get all this down. Yeah, get it. Um, Friday, Friday, Sabrina, Sabrina Lowry is doing an event, uh, an investor event on Friday. And then, of course, Saturday. We can't let you forget what's happening on Saturday. Saturday is the State of Wholesaling Revisited. Where we're going to talk revisited. about Revisited. I love that. <laughs> so we, we did this before. We uh -huh. did the State of Wholesaling before uh, where we talked about, you know, some of the things that are going on in our market. Yeah. But now those things have expanded even further. Yeah. So we have to revisit them. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the State of Wholesaling Revisited is actually going to be happening this Saturday where we'll be talking about, um, you know, contractors working, mm -hmm. you know, how we should should know how to know our numbers and yeah. things like that. The do's and don'ts of wholesaling. Don't send a deal with just an address. Yeah. Without painting a picture, mm -hmm. giving some idea of yeah. what that, that deal is about. Uh, we're going to be talking about a number of things. You know, for those of you that are going to be making it, we have a couple people that's going to be um, speaking with us. Mm -hmm. You think I can get Mo Hart to come out on Saturday? I don't know. I'm a, I'm I'd a, have to look at so our calendar. I'm, I'm we'll actually going I'm to. I'm I'm Mo Hart is going <laughs> to be there on Saturday. Like, oh. <laughs> I, I didn't know, do it, babe. I know you I watch it. it. I know you watch it because your wife is out here. <laughs> Mo Hart is going to be there on Saturday. Oh, you, get, you get me in trouble now. <laughs> no, I don't know what's going on Saturday. He might be able to. Look, I, I, hope, I hope he does. Otherwise, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be in trouble, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hump day. Happy hour. Oh, I have it now. Oh, it there is, it is. Okay. It's today from 6, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. It's at the Six Feet Under Pub and Fish House on at 437 Memorial Drive. So check that out today. Awesome. It's from 6 to 8 p.m. And it's being given by some great guys. So uh, definitely check it out. We'll be, we'll be over there tonight. Saturday is... Whole state of wholesaling revisited, and um, 
Can how, I just, how can the folks go ahead? I'm sorry. Well, I was just going to say about all these events, like you were talking about how people can get educated and how yes. they can learn mm -hmm. about this. Like this was not available before. No, you know? Oh my goodness! Like the it the, was not <laughs> the state and the amount of information that is available to us yes. as investors, the network, the community that we've built, where there is a meetup every single every day, every single day, you know, and it and it's thanks to people like you who are sharing all this information. Thank like you, how amazing you. is this that you have this following yes. of people who are now have privy to all this information that yes. you're sharing them and yes. and you must be incredibly passionate about it because i am you put yeah. a lot of effort into I it i do right like it's a whole lot of effort this, this does not come easy you right. should see all the equipment here y'all um so you know the, the support the the staff the help that you have yes you. yes <laughs> so it's just it's, it's a beautiful thing and yes. to be an investor yes. in this market and have access to people like you who are really like going out of their way to educate and help investors come up yes. is so amazing. So I'm just, it, it makes me so appreciative of our community yes. and just like grateful that that we're all able to come together, Absolutely. share what Absolutely. we know in order to help each other up. That's abundance mindset right there. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Everybody, You're right. I wish I'm people stealing this tagline. I wish I got junk. that. I wish I got that. <laughs> but you, when you talk, you said that something that's great, having an abundance mindset. Yeah. Because I remember a time mm -hmm. where people wouldn't share information like yeah. this. It was, it was, it, I'm going right? to keep it all to myself. Yeah. I'm going to make all the money and you're going to be the loser. I'm going to be the yeah. winner, yeah. you know. But, you know, now because of being connected to people like yourself, mm -hmm. you know, your husband and, and having those relationships mm -hmm. and knowing how much you all share. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys share a lot. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I mean, I could pick up the he, phone and call Mahar and ask him he, something. Because he, he, he's just as passionate. You yes. Know? So yes, he shares yes. it all the time. Yes. You know, I'm I'm getting there myself. Yeah. I'm trying, <laughs> you know, trying to share more, trying to open up, you know. Yeah, so yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, it's, it's amazing. It is. It is. I mean, it's awesome to me because. I know, you know, the, one of the things that I, I always repeat and I and I and I, I preach is the more you help other people get what they want, the more you'll get what you want. Yeah. You know, and I truly believe that. And that's why, you know, this this program. I mean, it started I'm, as I told you earlier. We just started mm -hmm. with an iPad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were out. We were out. This is sky. so impressive right now. Like I got light, spotlight. Right. right. <laughs> you know, but it, it grew out of just an idea. Mm -hmm of being able to you know kind of shine the spotlight on some people mm -hmm. here in the metro atlanta area and what they're doing and kind of the things that are, that are going on and it's, it's growing i mean it's grown but it's still growing mm -hmm. um we celebrated a year uh in june that we've been That's doing the awesome. show Congrats. and um thank you thank you and you know it's just something that you know and i'll be honest you know every tuesday night i'm like am i really gonna do this tomorrow <laughs> wednesday morning comes and i'm like I, nobody called me on Wednesday morning because uh -huh. I'm preparing, I'm preparing yeah, for this yeah. show, you know, because I want to be able to provide, you know, good content, yeah. you know, I mean, to, to bring people to the forefront of this business and what yeah. we do and some of the things that happen behind the scenes that people mm -hmm. may not know, yeah. you know, providing that real life mm -hmm. information, yeah. you know, that's why the show is a real life real estate investing, you know, yeah. so we can talk about you know, working with contractors mm -hmm. and the relationships contractors and investors have, yeah. good, bad, or indifferent, mm -hmm. you know. Absolutely. And, and those are the things that a lot of times people don't, don't have those conversations yeah. about. Talking about wholesaling. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I mean, I have a, I mean, I'm a fix and flipper. I do it all, yeah. you know. Um, but, but wholesaling has become a passion of mine because I'm buying my deals from wholesalers. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I see the things that are coming in and I'm like, this is not going to work. Mm -hmm. Where are they learning this thing yeah. from? And they're learning from a lot of people who are teaching them to do it the wrong way. Yeah. So this came as a result of also that being able to share information with people to show them there is a better way. Mm -hmm. There's a way that we can all work together. Mm -hmm. There is a way that I'll use um, the, the tagline from John John Stafford, yeah. everybody can eat. I know, I love it. I keep saying, I'm biting it, I know. Right. <laughs> it's so great. <laughs> Everybody can eat, yeah. you know, and, and, and our business can be sustainable and it, it can be maintained yeah. through the test of time. Yeah. You know, I mean, the way I see things are happening is we're rushing the bubble. Mm -hmm. We're rushing yeah. it. You know, we're we're, you know, making up numbers. You know, I mean, like it happened before. Yeah. <laughs> so we're rushing it. And yeah. it's like I think a lot of the people who are, that are participating in that didn't experience that before. Mm. 
and those will be the ones that go back and get jobs yes. when the market goes yeah, down yeah. again. <laughs> and, and so you're sharing that perspective now, which mm -hmm. is so key. And you know, you were saying like, oh, you know, Tuesday, sometimes you're always not so sure. Like, I feel like there are a couple things that hold people back from sharing. One, their mm -hmm. mindset, if they are yes. kind of hoarding and yes. feel like don't have that abundance mindset and that go work on yourself because that yes. is not the way to live yes, life. Right. I'll just say that. <laughs> but the other thing is feeling like unsure, you know, and I'll be honest, I've felt unsure. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't known my footing and, and how I've wanted to share in a public way yes. for some time, yes. mm -hmm. you know, and I've been the behind the scenes, you know, kind of um, investor um, and Mohar is such a pretty face. <laughs> so so he's been the face of our company mm -hmm. um, and, and he has such a passion for sharing. But so he, he always gives you credit. He, he does. He credit. does. He's, he's amazing he's amazing at that um but but he he has such a passion for sharing so he goes out there and he does it a lot but what's held me back is you know kind of lack of confidence in sharing it mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. ways to share it and what do i share what don't i share what do i feel is most helpful or the value i could bring and and i feel like i'm i'm finding my footing with that i'm you know mm -hmm. i feel more grounded in that and that i'm seeing the perspective of everything we talked about today in terms of how the the unique perspective of being an investor and you know a contractor and and how those can work together and a designer you know yes, and wanting yes. to share more of that with the investor community so that's key you know mm -hmm. um, for me in terms of feeling more confident to get out there like I did today but one of the things she that was, I she was on my show my show first y'all that's, right, that's right <laughs> but one of the things that was key for me is that a few years back I was having a conversation with somebody about like volunteering and um, you know my um, long story short you know my brother used to be the president of Big Brothers Big Sisters and mm. um, oh, wow. and so we're mm. all about like family gives back in different ways yes. and yes, um, yes. and and so um, there was a conversation I was having about what it means to be a mentor um, or mm. somebody for somebody to look up to you know a teacher for a child yes. for anybody and you show up you show yes. up Yes, absolutely, That's it. absolutely. And like, I'm getting chills just saying that because like, it's it's the act of just showing up. That's right. Yes. And showing up and sharing what you have, right? Sharing what you have to offer, mm -hmm. sharing your experience, because that's just going to come back to you, you know, because what you put out there in the world, like the impact, not to sound hokey or anything, but, but it, the I mean, impact it's, it's is real. like, yeah. it's crazy. And anything from like my Angelo said it, like the walking by somebody with a frown on their face and smiling at them down the street and the wow. impact, the ripple effect of what that can have out in the world. Yes. Just the yes. simple smile of yes. somebody who's frowning and mean grilling down the street. Right, I know. You know, <laughs> is, is tremendous. So, so showing up, Absolutely. thank you for that. Showing up in a way for investors. <laughs> In She's not going to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think it's a good way to end the show because it's it really is, just it about showing up and sharing what you have to offer and helping this community so we can all work together, you know, yes. beat that bubble and surpass that bubble, go Absolutely. past that bubble Absolutely. and continue as investors. Everybody's eating, everybody's um, in abundance, living in abundance, mm. and it's all working out. It's all yes. working out. <laughs> Keep it moving, y'all. <laughs> Sorry, we went Dr. But Phil there. I, I got my own personal Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, hey, I, I, can, right. I don't know what else to say. Listen, yeah. you guys heard it here. Thank you all for watching. Thank, Thank you, you all for continuously supporting the show. Thank we certainly you. appreciate it. Please give us feedback. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. I'm new um, to this, so give, give us some feedback. feedback. <laughs> Let us know what you think. You know, don't forget to hit those hearts, hit those likes. Yeah. Let us know what you think. Um, and actually, listen, if you guys that are watching this in the replay, you have questions, yeah. go ahead and put those questions in. Yeah. We'll get we'll Danielle to up. come back and, you Absolutely. know, look at those questions. And Especially we had technical difficulties, so check out yeah, you know, the yeah, different yeah. postings. So, so we're probably going to have to see if we can put these all together so y'all can get all the information yeah, yeah. Um, but listen again thanks for watching thanks for always supporting real life real estate investing and we look forward to seeing you all next all week right. thanks y'all